welcome you all for a critical analysis of seven types of ambiguity by William Ebsen. William Ebsen was an English literary critic and poet. He was known for his immense influence on 20th century literary criticism. Yes, the practice of close reading of literary works, a practice fundamental to new criticism. His literary works helped lay the foundation for new criticism, although Ebsen never allied himself with the new critics, because new critics disregard authorial intention. Ebsen earned degrees in both mathematics and in English literature, which he studied under I.A. Richards, who is considered to be one of the fathers of new criticism. Much influenced by John Tan, his poems are personal, metaphysical, that is reality beyond accepted to senses, elliptical, that is difficult even though he provided some explanatory notes. Anyhow, Epson today is best known for his literary criticism and his analysis of the use of language in poetical works. The literary critical work, Seven Types of Ambiguity, subtitled as A Study of His Effects on English Verse, is a work by William Ebsen, first published in 1930 and revised in 1947 and 1953. It was one of the most influential critical works of the 20th century and was a key foundation work in the formation of a new criticism school. New critical approach is close analytic reading of the text, a technique as old as Aristotle's poetics. New critics focused attention on the individual work alone as an independent unit of meaning. They oppose the critical practice of bringing historical or biographical data to bear on the interpretation of a work. This essay sought to enhance the reader's understanding of a poem by isolating the linguistic properties of the text. Epson suggested that words or references in the poems are often ambiguous. So if poems are presented coherently, they carry multiple meanings that can enrich the reader's appreciation of the work. Here comes the question of what is meant by the adjective called ambiguous or the noun ambiguity. Ambiguous in the sense doubtful or uncertain, not sure or capable of being understood in two or more possible ways. In other words, word or sentence that is not clear about the intention or meaning. This makes various interpretations. For example, the goat is ready to eat. In this sentence, it can either mean that the goat is cooked and ready for everyone to eat it, or that the goat is ready to be fed some food. Thus, when a word has more than one indeterminate meaning, that word is called ambiguous, and that sentence is called ambiguous sentence. Now, we are going to discuss the seven types of ambiguity stated by William Ebsen. According to Ebsen, the first type of ambiguity in English literature or in real life is metaphor. Metaphor is the first type of ambiguity. We are all familiar with the word metaphor. What is meant by metaphor? Metaphor is the indirect comparison between two different things for one common quality. Metaphor is also known as compress simile. Why compress simile? Because when we explain it, so it takes the form of a simile. It means natural or direct form of comparison for one common quality. Let me explain with one example. Sita is a peacock. This sentence is a wonderful example of metaphor. How? Because Sita is as beautiful as peacock and this sentence tells us indirect comparison. In second type of ambiguity is when two or more alternative meanings are fully resolved into one. That is, opposites making a new idea. Sometimes we have opposites to create a new one. Let me explain with an example. Suppose if you are rushing to your school and you ask your mom, where is your watch? Your mom says, when you came back from school, you threw your things here and there, and at last I have managed everything. See the words, here and there. They are opposites, but make a new meaning. The third type of ambiguity is pun. What is pun? 
pun means when a word has more than one meaning a pun is usually described as a play on words it is a clever witty form of figurative language which uses the words within a sentence to convey another meaning the pun is often used in the form of a joke where words can have more than one meaning or words can sound like they mean something else see for example writing with a broken pencil is pointless a boiled egg for lunch is hard to beat these sentences are used in order to encourage the reader to think differently about the situation at hand thus in third type of ambiguity two ideas are connected through context and can be given in one word simultaneously the fourth type of ambiguity is when two or more meanings do not agree but combine to make a complicated state of mind in the author it is also called freudian slip or words producing an abstract or outline thought the term should have a word from sigmund freud the founder of psychoanalysis it is actually a slip of the tongue that is motivated by and reveals some unconscious aspect of the mind it is like when you mean to say one thing but instead you say something entirely different it commonly happens when you are talking but also occur when typing or writing something down for example a child who accidentally calls their teacher mom is simply transitioning from spending most of the day with their mother to spending most of the day with their teacher or even calling one spouse by their ex these slip ups or the unconscious desires and urges or the things you actually want to say but feel unable to express the fifth type of ambiguity is called unfortunate confusion sometimes we think we can't express accurately or we can't define words producing a concrete thought epson describes a simile that lies halfway between two statements made by the author for example in the sentence my brother is lying on the bed it gives the reader a confused picture that his brother is lying like a dog or a snake on the bed so the dog or a snake creates an unfortunate confusion the sixth type of ambiguity is called philitum like see there are sometimes half sentences or incomplete sentences and we are expected to complete it when a statement says nothing and the readers are forced to invent a statement of their own most likely in conflict with that of the author see for example when your friend ask you what's up you have to complete the incomplete sentence the last type of ambiguity is when two words that within context or opposites that expose a fundamental division in the author's mind we can also say it as binary opposition see for example sometimes we think one thing and another will immediately come to our mind when we think about tall the image of short will come when we think about poor rich will come to our mind one thing that is associated with the other thing will immediately come to our mind making a fundamental division or in the words of epson a confusion or ambiguity the sepson reads poetry as an exploration of conflicts within the author and this book is no doubt abounds with examples epson's special contribution in this work was his suggestion that uncertainty or the overlap of meanings in the use of a word could be an enrichment of poetry rather than a fault thus he argued that the complexities of cognitive or involving conscious thinking and tonal meanings in poetry form the basis of the reader's emotional response thank you